Today we're going to talk about buttwink and specifically how to eliminate buttwink if it's something that you've determined that you want to eliminate in the context of whatever you're doing. Now, generally speaking, people talk about buttwink in the context of something like a barbell squat or any other kind of free weight squat. But this also applies to any other motion that's a lower body press, like a deadlift or like a leg press or a hack squat or anything similar. So first of all, what is buttwink and how do we go about sort of conceptualizing it to begin with? Well, butt wink is really spine motion, specifically spine rounding, and more specifically than that, lower spine rounding uh, that occurs in order for us to achieve a specific amount of depth in the context of a squat. Now, depth doesn't necessarily tell us exactly how we're moving and, and through what joints we're moving through more or less, but what depth does describe is just an overall sort of visual appearance of how far am I moving up and down. So. If you took the sort of uh, special person who's really, really good at squatting, they have really good segmental proportions for the squat, meaning that they have relatively shorter femurs, they have a relatively longer spine, and maybe they have a ton of motion through their ankle, they can sort of do this kind of a squat, all the while maintaining a perfectly balanced position over the midfoot, meaning they're not going to fall forward and they're not going to fall backward. So this red dotted line here represents the combined uh, direction of resistance and sort of center of mass as a consequence of, uh, of that of the individual who can just squat ass to grass. This is your typical um, high level weightlifter who can just seemingly squat down with little to no effort in having to manage that forward to backward thing. But this doesn't represent most people. And if any of you watching right now want to just sort of assess this, it's like take a relatively narrow hip width stance and try to do a body weight squat to depth. It will more than likely not look like this. More than likely, it'll look something kind of like that, right? It'll look a little bit more like what the world describes as a deadlift and a hinge as compared to a traditional looking squat, right, to full depth. And so what really, you know, butt wink is, is a strategy basically to get to this position here on the right, which is really just accomplished, not necessarily through more motion of the hip or of the knee or of the ankle necessarily, but what does tend to happen is motion through the spine where the spine sort of tucks underneath of people. Again, you can think of it as lower spine rounding in order for someone like uh, uh, what is being represented on the left here to get lower, right? So essentially it's just spine motion that you can think of that will allow you to move a greater distance visually. And again, that doesn't necessarily imply good or bad depending on the context and the person, but it does usually allow people to get deeper. So in myself personally, here's just a short video I, I took of myself um, for a video reel that I posted. Butt wink is sort of this process that occurs from, at least for me, if I'm you know not using any sort of uh, added load, I'm not using any sort of implement under my feet. Butt wink for me occurs around at this hip angle. And as I descend lower into the squat, you can see I'm pointing to it, my butt basically tucks underneath of me in order to get lower and I end up kind of again looking like a dog you know trying to take a poop or something like that um, as I attempt to go lower so this motion here yeah I'm having a little bit of extra range through my uh, knees primarily but most of this motion that's allowing me to go deeper is occurring through my spine tucking underneath of me and as a consequence I'm able to visually get deeper now again whether this is good or bad we'll talk about in just a second here but I want to make it clear that um, you know the context for this particular video is if you've determined uh, that you don't want to see this butt winking thing, this spinal flexion thing, then what can you do about it? Again, it's not to say that anyone that does this is going to you know have a spinal explosion. It's not to say that uh, anyone that does this is going to be perfectly fine. Neither one of those things I think can be generalized. We have to look at that kind of a thing on the individual level. But what we can say is that if we do have a goal of training our legs, specifically quads, hamstrings, adductors, glutes, and all the muscles that act around the hip and the knee, then moving through the spine isn't necessarily beneficial, right? It's kind of like we're moving through a set of joints that doesn't necessarily uh, need to move to contribute to the motion. And in some cases, people can have problems with this kind of motion if they do it in this particular context. So if that's you, and if you're someone who's looking to eliminate it, again, for whatever reason, here's a very quick solution that you can use to actually sort of uh, again, eliminate that butt wink Maybe not entirely, but at least substantially so that you can really just focus on your legs if you're finding that this whole spine moving thing is bothering you or if it's something that just visually is unappealing for whatever reason. So let's imagine that we took this same individual 
who was maybe the uh, average looking person who, again, when they squat down, they sort of do this deadlifty type thing or else they fall forward or backward. We can put something like a wedge, which is essentially just mimicking what we what sort of happens to someone when they're walking downhill or downstairs, um, which essentially just opens the starting position of this ankle um, uh, orientation. So if you look at this particular image here, right, the angle starts around 90 degrees uh, of, of um, dorsiflexion motion. Some people will call that zero degrees of dorsiflexion motion. And what happens when we go down to squat is there's some degree of dorsiflexion, but we're starting from this 90 degree angle here between foot and lower shin. But what we do when we start with something like a heel wedge is we actually open that angle. If you can see this angle is now greater than 90 between the foot and the bottom of the shin. And so not only do we have more room for our ankle to sort of um, dorsiflex forward, in other words, for the shin to come forward, but we've also effectively extended the distance between the ground and the knee. So what that sort of means in simpler terms is we've actually changed the relative proportions of the body to be more favorable to being able to stay upright in the squat. And usually when people use a significant heel elevation, what a squat ends up looking a little bit more like is something like that, where we actually are able to balance that center of mass over our base of support, over the middle of our foot approximately, maybe a little bit more in the t uh, toward the toes in the case of this particular setup. Um, but what it essentially allows for is purely motion through the knee and the hip as opposed to having or being forced to bend the spine around the spine in order to get lower. So what that looks like for me, and I just used a plate in order to do this, right? It is a 25 pound plate. I put it underneath my heels. Look at the massive difference now. You can see basically the relationship between my spine doesn't change, or the segments of my spine doesn't change from here where I was sort of restricted before, all the way down to the bottom. Maybe I lean a little bit forward more just so I don't fall backward. But this is essentially with no added weight and no added resistance to prevent me from moving anywhere. And what happens is essentially I'm able to move while keeping a rigid spine, all the while being able to bend my hips the same and bend my knees a little bit more. And as a consequence, I get lower without any of that kind of spinal motion. So if you're looking for a sort of quick fix, the quick fix for me is being able to sort of just add something beneath the level of the heels, which again opens up ankle range of motion and also changes our relationship to the floor, which is really again what matters is our relationship to the floor and the forces that we incur as a consequence of that to be able to squat to a greater degree of depth, again, through uh, the knee joint, through the hip joint, and just through the ankle joint, which is primarily what we're trying to do when we're trying to load the lower body. So if this is something that you've never tried, definitely try it out. If it's something that you've tried before and doesn't feel great for you, then maybe try to adjust the angle of your feet in tandem with the wedge. Maybe try to use a wedge that is um, either more significant or less significant. Play around with different things so that you can figure out personally for you what feels the best in this sort of relationship, uh, which again is really just you changing the um, relative proportions of your body as it relates to being able to do a squat. And for many of you, this will feel immediately much better. And again, for some of you, it might not feel as good and maybe you just feel good sort of doing the original squat that you were doing. In any case, if you do want to make a squat more like a, you know, what the world pictures as a normal squat, this is something that you can do. And I want to just reiterate that this isn't necessarily good. It's not necessarily bad, but in the context of something like a squat where we're really just trying to train the lower body, I highly recommend trying this out at the very least, specifically because we can, again, maximize motion through the joints that we're really trying to train and minimize motion through the joints that we're not trying to train. If you like this video and you want to learn more from me, please consider enrolling in my online anatomy and biomechanics course. The course contains over 15 hours specifically dedicated to improving your understanding of anatomy and physics and how it applies to lifting weights. Over 3,000 students have enrolled in this course and have reported back that it's the most easy to digest material that doesn't include any sort of boring textbook lecture that you might normally find in a typical college curriculum. So if you want to improve your ability to lift and as a consequence, grow muscle more easily and reduce your pain in the gym, check out the link in the description.